boys on a beautiful Saturday night. As Bama opens up the second half of their season, we say good evening along with Brian Greasy. I'm Steve Levy. Alabama comes in. They're banged up in the secondary. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Before you go any further, don't say it. Don't say it. Tua's got a knee brace. Come on. We're going to come. I'm not going to let you lie to the people at all. We're going to come clean here. It's Alabama <laughs> and everybody else, including Mizzou. There's no question. And you know what? Spending the last couple of days with the Alabama Crimson Tide, the thing that sticks out to me is they have done a 180 in how they win football games. For 12 years under Nick Saban, it has been defense, defense, defense. Not this year. This offense is scoring 56 points a game, and it's about the quarterback, a demeanor that is infectious, Steve. I can't wait to watch him tonight, but it's not all about Tua Tagovailoa. This offense has other weapons, certainly, that get him the football. Yes, uh, they're winning by an average of 40 points. They are blowing the doors off of opponents. And we will check on the student section early tonight to see if they've decided to show up for this one. A night game in the SEC here in Tuscaloosa. Missouri won the toss. They have deferred. Alabama will receive as the sun begins to set. And Josh Jacobs is back deep for the Crimson Tide. And he'll take it from the one. And get out to the 19-yard line. Here's Todd McShay. Uh, and you guys were talking about Tua. Tua is obviously a huge part, and he's making everyone around him better. But this isn't just the Tua show. I don't think Nick Saban's ever had a group of offensive skill players as good as this group. Tight ends. you got Jerry Judy at wide receiver, loaded with first-round running backs. And then the offensive line, the pass protection is exceptional. Tua's outstanding. He's everything he's cracked up to be. But this offensive skill group, guys, I, I don't know that there's a better one in the country. We will watch for that tonight. Alabama has scored a touchdown on every opening drive this season. That's six. Do I hear seven? Tonga Bailoa throwing for Devontae Smith. Incomplete. Christian Holmes with them step for step with the coverage. We talked about this infectious demeanor. He's got such a way with, with people. I think he is disarmed, if that's possible, Nick Saban, to a, to a big degree. He's one of the only people I've known in Alabama history with Nick Saban that gravitate towards him instead of away from him. Yeah, Nick says everybody runs away from him. This guy's special. He's different. On and off the field. Down the middle of the field is Jerry Judy. Who else for the score? 81 yards on the second play from scrimmage. Make it seven for seven. Opening scoring touchdown drives. It truly is amazing how they just take over games so early. They're so aggressive. Mike Loxley, their offensive coordinator, early in games loves to dial up free release access for Jerry Judy and if you let that man number four in crimson run free down the field he will burn you every single time extra point is through you know Alabama's actually a little behind took them 21 seconds to score last week <laughs> it's 23 seconds this week and to his knee appears to be just fine. He's just fine. You know, there's creative ways that Mike Loxley will release his wide receivers. And he knows. I asked him yesterday about free release with Jerry Judy. He says, I'm not sure why pe people keep letting him run free down the field. But if you do, this is what's going to happen. There's nobody that can run with number four. Here you go. What we spoke of, the opening drive for Alabama this season here in game number seven. I mean, the longest they've taken is eight plays to score a touchdown. But you see a couple of one plays, two plays here tonight. Simply amazing. And so Missouri will be trying to play come from behind early. They are down their top two wide receivers as they were a week ago. Both Nate Brown and Emmanuel Hall not here. Neither made the trip. Extenuating circumstances for Hall, who was very close to returning. Got some bad news a couple of nights ago. Tyler Beatty will take a knee. Emmanuel Hall 
very close to returning thought he would make the trip could certainly help Missouri just a little bit and found out just two nights ago that his father passed away unexpectedly so condolences to the Hall family and the entire Mizzou football family as well. Yeah, our hearts go out to the Hall family. Certainly, Emmanuel is, is is their best player on offense. He's a game changer. The last, he's got 11 touchdowns in his last 11 games he's played, averaging 25 yards a, a catch. He certainly would make a difference for Missouri in this game tonight. Already playing from behind. Here come the Tigers on first down with Larry Roundtree. It's a pickup of seven. Mac Wilson in the middle of that Bama defense. Drew Locke has had offers and opportunities around the country. Decided to stay in his home state of Missouri. You certainly understand that. All those great numbers, and yet has gone over two full games without throwing a touchdown pass. Up to throw, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Savion Smith. Smith the other way. Down the sideline. Looks like he stepped out of bounds, shy of the one. No Trayvon Diggs, you say? No problem, says yeah. Savion Smith. He's matched up on the best receiver for Missouri. That's the tight end, Albert Okue Boonham. And just physical at the point of attack, gets his head around, locates the football, and comes up just shy of the pick six. Second interception of the season for Savion Smith, who did have a pick six the last time around against Arkansas State. He did step out of bounds. They do their own turnover belt thing here, and Alabama gets the football back at the 14-yard line with Damian Harris. You know, Savion Smith, he was benched at, at the for, after the first play of the Ole Miss game, Steve, when D.K. Metcalf went over his head for a touchdown. They lost his confidence. They said he's not ready to play, and that's when Patrick Sertain Jr. started playing in the secondary, and now with the injury to Trayvon Diggs, Savion Smith on his first opportunity in the first series shows him he is ready. And it's all rolling right so far for top ranked Alabama. Off the play fake. Tungo by low and a throw for it. Out of the back corner of the end zone where Henry Ruggs was in the neighborhood. Demarcus Acey will be chasing him around all night. No question this Missouri secondary has been much maligned. They have given up a lot of big plays in the last couple of games last week. They gave up the winning drive to South Carolina. They're going to be tested often from Tunga Bailoa, six in the country throwing the football. Bama facing a rare third down conversion opportunity. They have converted at 59% on the season. As you see, third best in the country. From the 11, Tunga Bailoa throwing for it. And his receiver, Devontae Smith, got turned around. And it'll be fourth down. Christian Holmes on the coverage. It's nice sudden change defense from Missouri. Certainly not expecting to come out in that situation on the third play offensively, and Barry Odom gets a stop in the red zone. Something to note here, Tungo Vailoa was holding for kicks, but because of the knee sprain and the brace, they're going to Mac Jones, who is the third string quarterback. He is now the holder for Joseph Bullivis. This will be a 30 yard opportunity for Bulibus, who is five of eight on the season. And he is perfect. We're not even two minutes in. 10 nothing. Crimson Tide. ESPN College Football. Brought to you by Coke Zero Sugar. And to Blake Levy, oh, you're yeah. going to miss some points. Jerry Judy in the slot. They get him matched up on a safety. Look at this release. He releases to the outside. There's nobody to jam him at the line of scrimmage, and he's five yards beyond the safety. Protection is great. Look at Tua Tungavaloa go through his reads. One, two. Oh, I've got Jerry Judy. That's my answer. The protection allows him to do so much from the pocket. Jerry Judy, the E is silent. Nothing else about him. Everything else is loud. Tyler Beatty will bring it back. Short of the 20. Here's Adnan Verk. 
All right, thank you very much, Steve Levy. Updating you what's happening, Michigan State, Penn State. How about the Spartans? They grind them down, grind them down, hang around. Then Brian Lewerke to Felton Davis touchdown. It's a final, a stunner in Happy Valley as Mark D'Antonio's Spartans pull it off. And in overtime, Washington, Oregon, it's C.J. Verdell, 111 yards rushing. The Ducks win it 30-27. Neil Everett celebrating. Steve Levy, back to you. <laughs> yes, he is. Lots of surprising scores around the country here tonight and this afternoon. Nothing surprising about the Alabama start. Less than two minutes in already with a 10 to nothing lead. Here come the Tigers. We'll see how they answer. On the ground, Damari Crockett. We set you up with the Chick-fil-A impact players. Here's Todd. Yeah, Steve, we got to watch the matchup of the center from Missouri, Tristan Colon Castillo going up against really the whole deep line for Alabama but specifically number 92 Quinnen Williams and I put the other two guys that he's that are flanking him on all the list in the preseason Quinnen wasn't on him as a junior and he's been very upset about it he's I think been the best defensive lineman for Alabama this year second down and 13 it's Crockett he'll lean forward for a couple bring up a third down and long Raquan Davis heard what Todd was talking about right there. So you're not going to talk about me? You're going to talk about Williams? Well, let you me talk this, about everyone. Let me make this play. We talked to Drew Locke earlier in the week. He said, you know, what is the preparation like for Alabama? And he said, we want to keep it exactly the same. Once you start thinking, oh, it's Alabama, you've played right into the Crimson Tide's hands. But here they are on the road already down 10-0. Yeah, and you don't want to be in this situation either. Third and 12 situations backed up inside your 20. You got to protect the football in these situations. Locke has protection and throws, and it is caught. It's Albert O, his big tight end, Okue Bunam, for the big first catch. Gain of 23, exactly what the doctor ordered for the Tigers. Well, they tried this on the first drive, and it was an interception from Savion Smith, but the ball was too far inside, Steve. This time, Drew Locke gives the big tight end an opportunity on the outside. On first down, on the ground to Crockett. Raquan Davis makes his second stop of the night. Missouri without Emmanuel Hall and without Nate Brown, their top two receivers, they're going to need to rely on their best player, which is the tight end, Albert Okue Bunham. The other guys they have on this offense, Kendall Blanton, the tight end, needs to get some touches, and then Tyler Beatty, they've got to feed the ball to those guys in addition to leaning on that running game. They've got some young receivers, Cam Scott, Jalen Knox, a couple of guys who can fly, but they're true freshmen in a tough spot in Tuscaloosa. Second down and eight. Again, the pocket is clean for Locke, and he's behind his intended target, Jonathan Johnson. So Another Drew third Locke, long. Yep, Drew Locke, is, he's been a little bit jittery the last couple of days, you know, the, the last couple of games, excuse me. You're going to see there's a shallow cross coming from right to left. You just got to step up, step up in the pocket and make the throw. That time it's behind Johnson coming on that shallow cross. You catch that ball and get upfield, you might get eight or nine yards. Those are the kinds of plays you have to have on first and second down. Uh, should come as no surprise, Mizzou won the first three games of the season and lost the last two. Just had a big third down conversion, looking for more. Here's third down and eight. At their own 42. Two seconds to snap it. One. And Missouri has to burn a timeout. Timeout, Missouri. First timeout of the half. As we come back on a third down and eight, batted down. The ball was knocked away. Anthony Jennings got the hand up to knock it away. Fourth down. As if it's not hard enough to block these guys, then you run a quick screen here, just trying to get the ball to the back. And Anthony Jennings, if you don't get him on the ground, the right tackle, Paul Adams, not able to get him on the ground. He gets his hands up and gets a deflection. Jennings, the leader of that linebacking group, excellent as always. Mizzou will punt. Corey Fatoni is back at his 27. Jalen Waddell, the true freshman, to return for Alabama. The call for the fair catch at the 11 yard line. Alabama quarterback Tua Tungo Bailoa about to take the field again. It's a field that is a long way from home. 
I'm from Hawaii, but I'm not Hawaiian. I am full Samoan. Our culture is something that stands firm today. I don't know how Coach even found me all the way in Hawaii from Alabama. <laughs> Kid can do it all. <laughs> kind of unfair, isn't it? I love that he plays the ukulele. He's just got that spirit and that energy about him that people gravitate towards him. On the ground, Josh Jacobs, his first carry of the night. He'll lower the shoulder. Adam Sparks knocked him out. I think he's the absolute perfect demeanor for Alabama, right? Alabama, this this culture, this place, they live and breathe football, right? And and this family coming from Hawaii, they have a different way of approaching things. They're laid back. They're serious when they need to be serious, but they don't take themselves too seriously. He's a humble kid. He's had the perfect approach to, to Alabama and Nick Saban. He's a bit of a character. His teammates seem to just absolutely love being around him. Quick screen to Henry Ruggs, the first is fastest player in the program, shows off some of those wheels. Henry Ruggs, there is a flag down behind the play. Back at the 23-yard line, there is a flag. If it stands, it's 83 yards for the score. Devontae Smith was out there on the edge trying to block for rugs. Looks like this may come back. Good block, guys, that it turned out to be holding. And I was standing about 10 yards away from him. I thought he did a good job, but looking at the replay now, maybe got a little grabby. Just love the way these receivers are blocking for each other on the edge. Yeah, Todd, it looked like when Demarcus Acey tried to disengage and get an arm out to make the tackle, and he went down. That's what the officials saw, and I think it's a fair call. Alabama doesn't need any more help from yeah. the officials, right? They don't need a break. No sympathy around the country <laughs> for top ranked Alabama. Two tight ends. Damian Harris in the backfield. Tug of to throw. Great pocket. And he overthrew his tight end, Hale Henches. Got another flag down here. Kevin Williamson, our referee. The flag's back at the five. It's from the backfield. Personal foul, face mask. Offense number 74. That's Kevin Williams. Third down. That's Jedrick Wills, the sophomore from Lexington, Kentucky. He's responsible for the blind side of his quarterback. And again, he's the right tackle because two is a left-handed quarterback. A lot of times we see illegal hands to the face from these defenders and that's very difficult to rush the quarterback that way and that was a very clear face mask and he ripped him down. Third down and eight. Mizzou rushing five. Tonga Valoa gets rid of it. It's Judy. Makes some people miss. He's out to the 35. He's got plenty of first down yardage for Cam Hilton upended him. It's a gain of 28, Todd. I just don't understand how you're trying to keep a safety, Tyree Gillespie, on the most talented wide receiver of this group. The second he saw the matchup, Tua went right to four, and it was an easy first down. Todd, I don't understand how that was third and eight. There was a personal foul face mask penalty on Wills, and it was third down and eight in that situation. On the ground, Josh Jacobs has another first down. Adam Sparks made the tackle. 18 yard gain there. I guess that was half the distance to the goal after the personal foul penalty, which was a break for Alabama. Already Still inside in the third, 15. Third and eight situation, yeah. So that's the math on that. I was told there would be no math. Tungo Bailoa continues to spread it out. Both sides of the field. Devontae Smith that time on the receiving end. Demarcus Acey able to knock him out. You know, one of the biggest differences that I noticed watching Alabama this year to previous years is on first down, they are throwing the football. They are releasing all five eligible receivers, trusting their offensive line and Tua to make the right reads. That is a complete opposite change from the way Nick Saban has operated this team in the past. 
Tonga by Loa so far is four of eight in the game. He's 75 percent on the season. Got plenty of time. Now takes a hit. He fumbles the football. Ball comes out and it's recovered by Mizzou. It's Akeel Byers on the recovery from Fayetteville, Arkansas, the sophomore. The big hit on Tonga Balo. We don't see him take a lot of big hits. And credit Kobe Whiteside, the defensive tackle, number 78. It's just a little game in between in the middle of the field. And this is why you typically are a little bit hesitant to do all that free release on first down because you open up these lanes. Whiteside makes the play, hits to a Tonga Bailoa, and Ayers recovers for Missouri. It's the rare turnover for Alabama. They've lost four all season. So the Tigers start across midfield. Lock throwing on the run, and he skips it to Jonathan Johnson. And again, how big is that holding call from Devontae Smith? It would have been a touchdown to Ruggs. Instead, they turn it over. But now Drew Locke's got to make some plays. I mean, this game is going to be on Drew Locke's shoulders. There's no question about it. And the last couple of games where he's been in tight ball games, he hasn't been able to pull it out for Missouri. Tough, tough two-point loss a week ago in the rain at South Carolina. On the ground, quick hitter handoff to Larry Roundtree. And it's going to bring up a third and short. Xavier McKinney came up from the strong safety spot. Third and one upcoming, Todd. Yeah, it was just interesting to see the offensive staff be so calm for Alabama when they came up. Usually down here in the field, you see the offensive line coach screaming at the offensive lineman. Tua came over, was relaxed, put his helmet down. The offensive line sat down and started talking it out. It's just interesting to see. Third and one. It is Roundtree. Has first down yardage. Down to the 33 of Alabama. Steve, this is a veteran offensive line from Missouri. I don't think that they're going to be out of their place here coming on the road and playing Alabama. Yes, it's a good defensive front, but these guys have played a lot of football, and they ran for 286 yards last week in the game. Little tempo from the Tigers. Lock the handoff. Nothing doing. See if they even get back to the line of scrimmage. Roundtree might have lost a yard. Phil Mathis in the middle of that Alabama defense. Missouri has been known to throw it all over the lot but the difference this year in my opinion has been their ability to have balance running the football Derek Dooley their new offensive coordinator comes over from the Dallas Cowboys with a renewed emphasis on running the football second down and nine round three it's going to be another loss it's Raekwon Davis who met him in the backfield one of the things Missouri likes to do is pull offensive linemen you're going to see two guys pulling around here, and Raekwon Davis is just too fast up the field. You got to block him if you're going to start pulling. You got to get that seal block on the on the weak side, and nobody was there to take it. In case you can't tell, it's third down and 14. Lock with time. Oh, Kue Boonham makes the grab, but he comes up short. He's about two yards shy of the line to gain. That's a really nice play there from Drew Lock. Don't force the ball. Don't, don't be careless with the football. Get about 10, 12 yards. At least give your team an opportunity to get three points on the board. Be a 43-yard field goal attempt from here for Tucker McCann. McCann thought he was the hero hit a 57 yard field goal last week with a minute 18 left to give the Tigers the lead and it turned out to not be enough zeros on the play clock they got a timeout Barry Odom play of game offense five yard penalty okay. Wow, that's a killer. Well, there was one official over there Five that's. Expiration of play clock, timeout, Missouri. Second timeout of the half. Yeah, I thought the headlines were that, that signaled that they got the timeout. So that's how Missouri spends their second timeout. All right, that'll be fun. 
the Riot Bowl, of course, to West Virginia and Iowa State. So we are back. Yardage remains the same. A 43-yard attempt. There was no penalty. They got the timeout instead. So here's Tucker McCann. Bit of a high snap on the way. And McCann squeezes it home. Again, I mentioned McCann had the field goal last week with a minute 18 left from 57. Thought it was going to be good enough for the Tigers. And then Parker White comes through for South Carolina from 33 yards away to break the hearts of Mizzou. Well, Alabama has looked as dominant as any team in recent memory, but Nick Saban isn't satisfied. And he knows tougher tests lie ahead. I don't think that we really beat the other team when you give up 31 points. We're going to play a lot better offensive team this week, one of the best offensive teams in the country in Missouri. We just need a lot of guys to have a little more focus, a little more discipline, uh, a little more confidence and believing uh, that if they do their job the way that we want them to do it, they're going to have the best chance to be successful. Well, Nick has made a career of buttering up the Less fortunate opponents coming up. He also said Mizzou could be 5-0 and right. on the season, right. so we get well, it. So they win 65-31, to 31, right. right? That's like 34 to nothing, right? right. But, but I guess you, know, you give up 31 points. He's the master, and that's why he's the best that's ever done it, is because he finds the way to motivate his team unlike any other coach in college football. Josh Jacobs trying to get the return out to the... 22 yard line so Missouri has let the game breathe a little bit you're so you're, you're so caught off guard when Tunga Bailoa makes a mistake because we never see it happen on his way it looks like a direct route to the Heisman Trophy but he takes the big hit leads the turnover and gets the Tigers on the board honestly he needs to have some adversity right I mean there's going to be adversity throughout the course of this season for for Tua and it hasn't they haven't played a lot of great defenses let's be totally honest about that flex. right Texas A&M maybe this is the best defense uh, Ole Miss horrible right. so he needs a little bit of adversity we'll see how he responds here in this drive he has yet to see a fourth quarter snap Bit of a high snap, able to bring it down. Being behind is, has not been a problem either for Alabama. They have trailed for 70 seconds. 70 seconds all season. And that was when they, 7 0, they were trailing. Uh, Georgia, by the way, prior to today, only trailed for 15 seconds. West Virginia, prior to today, hadn't trailed for a single second on the season. Tugger Bailoa throwing off the play fake to Devontae Smith. Down to the 43 yard line. I'm standing right behind two there on that throw and he's about an inch or two shorter than me. I don't know how he saw the receiver or how he knew to throw to that spot. Great job of moving his feet just a little bit inside the pocket to find a slight window to know when to get the ball out on time and a perfect strike. You know Todd what I thought was interesting talking with Mike Loxley their offensive coordinator yesterday is that they have incorporated a couple of different styles of offense here with this team in 2018. Brian Dayball who was the offensive coordinator a year ago came from New England. He brought a lot of the passing concepts from the New England Patriots and started to implement them. Obviously coach Saban wanted to do some of that Mike Loxley comes from a tree that's very different. They're doing RPOs. They're releasing five guys out in protection on first down throws. They're doing so many different things and combining them together. But the glue that holds it all together is number 13. On the ground it's Damian Harris for first down yardage. Brandon Lee was the injured Tiger. He's replaced by Ronald Perkins. It's a gain of 11. See Lee still hobbling on the sideline. First down and 10 is there across midfield. It's Harris with some people in front of him. Picking up his blocks beautifully inside the 30 yard line for Trey Williams swung him around. Great job by the left guard Lester Cotton the center Pierce Baker. Watch him come out here 66 and 71 and they get these guys covered up 66. He's so big Cotton is he comes out on that corner and wants no part of him. Really nice first down run. Jalen Hurts is in the ballgame. 
That's Hurts in the slot. They put him in motion, give him the football. Hurts to throw. Why not? Able to complete to Harris out of the backfield. He has the first down. He is crashed down into by Therese Hall. Last week, they gave the ball to Jalen Hurts on the end around. This time, it's a designed reverse. That was planned all along, and he comes back out and gets the ball to Damian Harris. What a great way to get Jalen Hurts involved. Keep him in this offense because he's a leader on this football team. There That's Hurts in the slot to the left of Tungo Bailoa. Much better when you draw a circle around him. <laughs> and it's Hurts on the receiving end of the throw. He's greeted quickly by six or seven white jerseys led by Khalil Oliver. But Hurts can do it all on the receiving end. If I'm a former quarterback and you're going to throw me the first pass as a receiver I've caught, I might not want to go right over the middle. <laughs> and Hurts gets the standing ovation on his way out. He's actually more popular not playing by the way he has handled everything with such class here at Alabama. So Hurts checks out. That was the first career catch for Jalen Hurts if you're scoring at home. Tunga Bailoa throwing for the end zone. It is caught, but out of the end zone. Devontae Smith made the grab, but Adam Sparks able to knock him out of the end zone. And it, Smith was open, just ran out of real estate, and it's a nice job there by Sparks of continuing to fight on that play and pushing him out of bounds. Third down and three. From the 10. Can get the first down. Try on the other side. Looking for Judy. Looked like he got tied up in some traffic. I'm a big fan of when you play Alabama coming up and jamming Jerry Judy in the slot. If we see what happens if you let him run free. This time Sparks gets up there gets a little bit of a hand on him just redirect him off of his route an instant and that's what happens in incompletion. Joseph Bullivis on to attempt a 28 yard field goal after already hitting from 30. And able to put that through. I mean, it's only the first quarter, and we have seen it all already. Jalen Hurts just doesn't come into the game. He catches the football all as well. First career grab and a handshake from the coach. One. This guy Cam is my personal favorite. Yes. You get that view from right behind the quarterback. It's a little bit easier to see. Like what Todd was saying, Tunga Vailoa is six feet tall. It's not so easy to see from behind. This guy Cam makes everything better. Well, yesterday things got a bit heated. The Crawford Benavides weigh in. And that fight is coming up right after our game tonight. You get the sense these two guys don't like each other. Don't take my word for it. Here's a good wow. example of it. Was that staged? This is the weigh in. Our boxing expert on the crew, Mike Mascara, insists that was not scripted. I mean, that was that was classic. That was like Rocky Balboa and Apollo <laughs> Creed. Yeah. Uh, Joe Tess is fired up about the fight tonight. He'll be calling it. And if Joe's fired up, then I'm excited. Yeah. And I'm interested in it. Catch the undercard on ESPN Plus. More value for you everywhere you look. In a 13-3 game. The fake to Beatty and Drew Locke throwing on the rod and right in and out of the hands of Jonathan Johnson. Johnson went down with cramps a week ago, so not only was Locke without Brown and Hall, he lost Johnson for a portion of the game, able to return and get in the game here tonight. When you play quarterback, you take the brunt of the criticism, right? And you also get a lot of lion's share of, of the credit, but this receiving core for Missouri has to help Drew Locke in this game. Jonathan Johnson has dropped too many balls this season. Here's Beatty. Try the left side behind his blockers, and he has first down yardage. 5'9, 190 from Memphis. Beatty getting it done. 
We talked to Locke this week, and he's, you know, we asked him about, hey, you're down your receivers. Just look, we want to be an SEC offense. We need to be able to adjust to injuries, and that, that's what you want to hear from your quarterback. He said all the right things this week, and I think uh, he's maturing at, right before our eyes. He threw 44 touchdown passes, the most in SEC history yes. last season, right? But who cares about the stats, right? As a quarterback, you care about winning. And, and in the last two weeks, I think there's been a change in Drew Locke and what his points of emphasis are. Here's Beatty. He is wrestled down. Patrick Sertan came up to make the stop from his corner spot. I think we're going to find out a lot about Drew Locke in this game. We found out something about him in the Georgia game, right? They stayed in that game. It was a two touchdown game uh, late in that game. Last week, he didn't make enough plays to win. And now another challenge for Drew Locke. And to Todd's point, when these NFL scouts look at this kid, they're going to look at Alabama and Georgia games. Beatty able to turn the corner. Deontay Thompson banged him out at the 40, Todd. I thought it was interesting talking to the coordinator, Derek Dooley. But he's, he said, you know, this is kind of all new for him, and he's just learning, and it's part of his development. We weren't in a lot. The team wasn't in a lot of close games and critical games the last couple of years. He was thrown for a lot of yards. They were either winning big or they were losing big, and they just didn't play any key, key games. Alabama hustling to get players off the field in the final half minute. Mac Wilson the tackle. That looked like a horse collar from here. And we'll see if Mac Wilson did indeed get flagged for that. Personal foul, horse collar tackle, defense number 30. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. It's great hustle from Mac Wilson, but this this play, this penalty started from the substitution. Everybody was a little bit late. The defensive line was late. Wilson was late, and that's a very easy call for the official. And they'll move the ball to the 20-yard line of the Crimson Tide. Final half minute, quarter number one on a Saturday night at Tuscaloosa. Bama only rushing three. Locke has time for lunch. And time to find his man for the touchdown. It's Jalen Knox for the score. A beauty of a ball. 20 yards on the money. Great patience from Drew Locke. Understanding that it's only a three-man rush. You got five offensive linemen. Take your time. The number one read is not there. It's not there. Now you start directing traffic. This is where you want him to go. So you get him out there. Lead. Knox. That's a beautiful throw and catch for the touchdown. With two seconds left on the clock here in the quarter. Extra point on the way. And it is good. Drew Locke breaks out of his mini slump. He had not thrown a touchdown pass since 7-10 left in the second quarter against Purdue. That was four weeks ago. I can't tell you what that does for the confidence of Drew Locke. Everybody's been talking about where is, what's wrong with Drew Locke. Is this not the right system for him? Can he understand it? Can he operate it? And that's a big time throw and catch in the first quarter. Missouri has a field goal and a touchdown their last two possessions at Denver. All right, Steve, thank you very much. An update on the Iowa State. They're taking on West Virginia. Tied at seven as the clock's ticking down at the end of the first quarter. Nice fake there as David Montgomery takes it in. How about the uni? Cycle is up 13 to seven. Steve, back to you. And then thank you in a three-point game with two seconds left. That was a little uncharacteristic, that three-man rush from Nick Saban. Right? You don't see that very often. Normally, they're bringing four, and they like to play that matchup zone behind. Uh, he rolled the dice there with the three-man rush, and they got beat. Touchback into the end zone. We'll have one more snap in the quarter. So after getting behind 10-0, Missouri must feel pretty good about themselves all of a sudden. Yeah, and, and uh, turnover on their first drive offensively set up Alabama in great position. Their defense got to stop and forced a field goal attempt. So I think if you're Barry Odom, after everything that happened last week and the emotion of losing that tight game in a quagmire to South Carolina to come on the road, you didn't know how your team was going to respond. They've responded well. We talked to Barry Odom yesterday, and 
said, you know, he's not into moral victories and no coaches, but one of his keys were to force Alabama to play in the fourth quarter. And they really haven't had to play in the fourth quarter against anyone. They will, if nothing else, have to play into the second quarter. <laughs> fourth quarter is a long ways away. The quarter will come to an end. Top-ranked team in the country, Alabama, with a 13-10 lead. Mizzou more than just hanging around so far. On ESPN, number two, Georgia already went down today, lost by 20 at LSU in the SEC. And here, Alabama again, blowing people out, usually get on their way, heading into the second quarter, up by 17 here tonight. Only up by a field goal. We've seen a lot of different sets from Alabama offense. We saw Jalen Hurts on the last drive. Now we've got two halfbacks in the game with Josh Jacobs and Najee Harris. And it is Harris, the second man through. He's out to the 38-yard line. Tyler Gillespie made the stop. And I really like when Josh Jacobs is in the game. He's so versatile. He can run the ball, catch the ball. He can be like a tight end in there and run routes. He's just an outstanding, versatile football player. Picked up the first down yardage. Tyree Gillespie, who made the stop, has moved into a starting role. He's played so well. Play fake. Tonga Bailoa throwing and completing to Jalen Waddell, the true freshman. And it's Gillespie again, another tackle. Personal foul, welcome the passer. Defense number five. The 15 yard penalty will be enforced into the run. Automatic first down. Terry Beckner, a little too aggressive. Beckner, the senior captain and leader, and that's just, you know, he gets up around the neck. If you get him in the chest, then they're not going to throw that flag. But uh, in football, whether it's college or pro football these days, if you get any body part up around a, a passer's face mask, you're going to get a flag. I don't necessarily agree with it, yep. <laughs> but that's the rule. It's a 14 yard reception plus the 15 yard penalty. And tied on the move. Tunga by a low throw it. That ball was tipped in the middle, and Waddle still able to make the grab inside the 20. It looked like Beckner again had a chance to get a finger on that ball. This is the same call they just ran just to the other side, to the wide side of the field. This is why I'm a proponent of getting up and jamming the wide receivers. If you give them these easy throws, these uh, off throws like you see again here in the slot nobody nobody on the receiver Harris the ball carrier able to turn the edge and a bit of a face mask Beckner looked like he got a a full hand of helmet there and I do not see a flag on the field you know a player to watch in this game for Missouri is Therese Hall number 24 take a look at him he's going to come up and hit the center Pierce Bacher right there oh my goodness <laughs> He's a heck of a football player. Therese Hall. Third red zone trip for Alabama. A couple of field goals have come from it. Second down and five. Harris won't get back to the line of scrimmage. It is Therese Hall making the stop there. Hall's a guy who usually will go on social media to find, uh, find out some things about his opponent. Does he? From a little trash talk. He said he got the idea from Kobe Bryant, oh, okay. who was a great trash talker. <laughs> but I get the sense you're not talking any trash to Alabama. I don't know. Why, you would, know? why would make these guys a little more angry? I wouldn't treat Alabama any different than anybody else. I mean, that's that's how you come into an, an environment like this and win. And if I had, if I'm a Three betting man. I'm say at a Hall on the previous would play. do the same thing. That play is now under video review. Looking for a targeting call. Let's take a look at what they're looking at. It will give you a look, too. Review targeting was detected on number 24 of the defense. The kill will be enforced after the two goal. Automatic first down. By rule number 24 is ejected from the ball game. Therese Hall, the senior from Georgia, has been ejected. Jim Blackwood, yes. our rules official, joining us here in the booth as he does every week. Not a defenseless player, 
But well, it looked like crown of the helmet. Crown of the helmet to the side. He leads with a crown. Therefore, it's a 913. Therefore, it's targeting. Boy, that, that's tough, Jim. I got to be honest. I mean, I understand defenseless players and hitting in the head or neck area, and I understand the crown. But you're a linebacker on a running back trying to get a guy down any way you possibly can. I think this rule needs a little bit more benefit of the doubt to these players. Therese Hall is the best player on this Missouri defense. Now he's out of the game. Right. But that's the rule. So we'll see if they change it during the offseason. On first down and goal, Harris, the ball carrier, Beckner, made this up. Jim, what, what's not what's 913? It sounds like an area code. What is that? <laughs> 913 is a rule <laughs> reference. Got it. Okay. I'm sure most of America's what's 912 just for the just for the good. For that uh, that's a good question. <laughs> so 913 is targeting. Now, now not only does Missouri lose their best player they got to find some leadership and Cale Garrett yeah. number 47 their Mike linebackers got to step up in this situation. That's the second personal foul by Mizzou on this drive. A couple of automatic first downs they had the roughing the passer. It's Harris fighting for the goal line Jordan Elliott got enough of them to keep him out. Third and goal upcoming. Nick Bolton is a true freshman. He's the guy that's going to come in for Missouri uh, in replace of, of Therese Hall. But you see tonight red zone uh, possessions. This Missouri defense has been up to the task and keeping them out of the end zone. It's taken a long time to get this play call in. I think Nick Saban is going to call a timeout. A lot of confusion. Tunga Bailoa to throw. Back of the end zone. Caught. Touchdown. Irv Smith in the back of the end zone for the score. Fourth touchdown of the season for Irv Smith. Scored 21 seconds in a week ago on a 76-yard score. That one much shorter distance two right. yards. It's all pass protection too. Uh, these two offensive tackles for Alabama are playing uh, really well tonight. Extra point is good. Bama doubling up Mizzou 20 to 10. Jonah Williams one of the best left tackles in all of college football. He's right here and then you got Jedrick Wills. Watch the rush up the field. They just continue to push these guys up past Tonga Vailoa, trusting that he's going to step up in the pocket. Great looking pocket there, and it gives time for Irv Smith to work the back end line for the touchdown. Such a weapon for Alabama to be able to release five guys pretty much every single snap into a route because you're affecting these zones, knowing that you're going to get the protection that you need on the back end. Thought McShay was going to step up and intercept that pass in the end zone. <laughs> Todd, don't be afraid to get involved down there. Hey, he's trying to stay out of the way. <laughs> I think Irv Smith might have just got on uh, Todd McShay's top 150 list there, right in front of him. I think you did this past week when I started studying more <laughs> tape of Alabama. <laughs> well, it seems like half your list is Alabama I know, players. No, it's getting embarrassing. How about some diversity, McShay? <laughs> And we'll see how Mizzou will answer back. But first, here's Adnan. Steve, I've got the All-State mayhem moment for you. Last time Virginia hosted a ranked Miami team in 2010, and they beat him. Here's Nikosi Perry get picked off by Juan Thornhill. And as a part of the return, take a look at the official who unfortunately is going to get the worst of it. It's 10-0 Virginia, and right about there, oh, my. Forget about 9-1-3. We're going to call 9 one one Leaves back to you. <laughs> Adnan's always paying attention. You've got to yeah. be careful. He's, he's listening. After the fair catch, that, of course, the new now old rule in college football out to the 25 yard line. And that's where Mizzou will take over, trailing by 10. Demarie Crockett, the ball carrier, for a few. We mentioned Todd's a top 150 players, just littered. With Crimson Tide players. And, you know, the offense is young, and that's what's scary for college football. The offensive line is where the three prospects lie. And then defensively, you know, Bama's had 15 players drafted, six in the first round the last two years, and they still have all these guys, starting with Deontay Thompson at the safety spot. It's Crockett again. 
out to the 32 bring up a third down yeah Todd and nobody wants to hear the excuses right if you're Alabama faithful on defense you lose all these players and they still expect them to play at this high level they've lost so much talent especially as Todd said in the secondary Mika Fitzpatrick Ronnie Harrison from a year ago both corners so it's no surprise that they're having a little bit of a struggle early in the season with some of the injuries on top of it. Rock going the wrong way, gives up the football, it's loose, it's still loose, and Alabama's going to recover. I think Jennings is on top of it at the 13-yard line. just cannot make the catastrophic error against Alabama. Drew Locke is in is in trouble. You got to throw the football away. And you're waiting for Albert Okue Boom to come open. He doesn't come open. Throw the ball into the stands. Live to fight another day. This is a big time error from Drew Locke. Locke was backpedaling and finally ran out of real estate when Isaiah Bugs caught up with him. Crimson Tide take over at the 13-yard line. Tonga Bailoa looking to throw for it quickly. Devontae Smith in there for the score. Alabama is so good you cannot help them and you've turned the football over now if you're Missouri twice in this first half one interception and a fumble both on Drew Locke and they're going to make you pay there's not a question of if but when. Joseph Bullivis is getting really good at extra points 35 of 36 on the season. Boots another one through. And in the blink of an eye, Grease, Missouri was down three, and now they find themselves down 17. Bama with two touchdowns in less than a minute and a half. Look, you come in here as a visiting team, you need to play the perfect game. Yeah. And that starts with turnovers, and there's another great example well, there. I think their defense is playing well enough, okay? And that's the real story for Missouri. The, the positive was they were playing well enough on defense. It's their quarterback, their senior leader, has let them down with the turnovers. And when you do that in this kind of environment, it's, it's feeding the momentum of Alabama. Right. They're going to continue to take their shots. And if you give them more possessions, they're going to score more points. And the turnovers in the worst parts of the field as well give Alabama the short field to work with. And again, the recipe for success for Mizzou here, you know, there's no penalties, all smart plays, win the turnover battle. And again, it, there are turnovers and there are turnovers. And giving that up at the 15-yard line, Ballot is so explosive. They, they don't need any help. And the Tigers helping them to this point. Locke will get another shot, but first back to Adnan. All right, Leafs, thank you very much. An update what's happening in Ann Arbor, Wisconsin, and Michigan. And Shea Patterson, his previous longest rush was for 29 yards. How about the giddy up here in his step? 81 yards. He's trying to go all the way before he's pushed up. Come on, hey, the wood punched in. 7 0 Wolverines. It's on ABC. All right, Adnan, thank you. I mean, this second yeah. quarter, there's the first update we get from Adnan. I need, right. more, I, need, I need better service from Adnan on the Michigan Wolverine updates. Who's the last Michigan quarterback who could run like that down the sideline? Uh, Demetrius Pre Taylor. Present company <laughs> excluded, obviously. I would have scored there. Yeah, you, you would have got in, right. <laughs> Shea Patterson making plays on the ground. Roundtree. Feels like Missouri needs to settle back in here. Trying to catch their breath again, now trailing by 17. Under 10 to go here in the first half. Steve Levy, Brian Greasy, and Todd McShay. We have been treated, our crew has been treated to, I mean, just great atmosphere after great atmosphere a couple of weeks ago at LSU. Yep. Last week at the Big House, and here tonight in Tuscaloosa. Spectacular college football settings. 
Unless you're rooting for the visiting teams, of course. There's a flag come down as Roundtree was gaining yardage. Let's see. Holding on the offense, number 59. The penalty is 10 yards in the previous spot. Okay, second down. It's Case Cook, the backup right guard. Yeah, Barry, Barry Odoms. You know, settle things down, as you said, but you got you to eliminate the penalties. Talking with him yesterday, you know, he said, we got to just keep swinging, right? We just, we're going to come into a very hostile environment, and we've got, we had an emotional week last week. We just got to keep playing, keep swinging. But, you know, there's a lot of people in Missouri starting to wonder about Barry Odom, you know, and, and this is a tough place to answer those questions. In his third season, there was an article that came out critical of Odom saying, Missouri's making the same exact mistakes yeah. they made in his first season. And what you want to see is progress. Odom is trying to sell that they're closer. They're a step away. And look, the health of the wide receivers, yeah. I don't, I'm not sure you can say enough about that. To go without your two big outside weapons with a great quarterback, if he doesn't have them, it's a different team. Yeah. The other thing is the quarterback really is playing like a rookie. Yes. You know, so the guy you're depending on is has not been up to the task. Here's Locke sideline. What a grab. Jalen Knox stuck his hands out to make the catch. He had the touchdown earlier. Knox with a Terrific grab for 24. That ball was right where it had to That's be. A big time throw right there in the hole against a two deep defense, two deep man under, and that's a beautiful throw from Drew Locke. Maybe that will get him back into this football game. From the 46 on the ground, Roundtree for a yard or two. There is good news for Mizzou in their immediate future. Talking to the coaching staff, it certainly sounds like Brown and Hall. Once Hall can get past his family issue, they're they're close to re being ready to go, Greece. Yeah, I think I think they're going to be fine if when those two guys come back. That that creates more balance. They've been able to run the football, and Okue Boonham is an excellent tight end, and they've been good against the run on defense. It's just they've given up too many big plays in the secondary and turned the ball over. Second down and nine, off a draw. Bama wasn't buying that. Quinn and Williams made the stop. There's Quinn again. This guy, is, he's using his hands a lot better this year. He's got the quickness. He's not in on a lot of pass downs, obvious pass downs, but he's been a monster versus the run this season. He's so quick, Todd, and he uses his hands really well. I really enjoy watching him on tape because he'll swim, he'll slap, and just uses those hands and quickness to get by offensive linemen. Third and 11. Lock underneath to Roundtree out of the backfield. Short of the marker. Savion Smith made sure of that, and it's fourth down. That's a nice play by Savion Smith. You know, everybody in the Alabama world is looking at who's going to replace Trayvon Diggs. And they saw a little bit of Savion Smith earlier in the season and wondered how he would come out and play. He had the interception on the first drive, and this is a big time tackle to save a first down and force a punt. So far, so good for number four. Savion Smith's high school coach, none other than Chris Wenke. Corey Fatoni is back to punt. Jalen Waddell is back to receive at his own 10. Waddell will call for the fair catch at the 13. Savion Smith, the five star recruit, junior from Tampa. Doing his thing. On it. Famous sauce from Dreamland. Chris, where's my Shay? Hey, give me a minute. I'm busy over here. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't pay the bill. Had McShay doing the dishes. <laughs> Story of our lives. Now, McShay did a great job, you know, doing the dishes, but you, yeah. on the other hand, I don't think yeah. you got the wood into the pit enough, you know. You got to get it all the way under the fire. Look at this. Like, oh, you're, you're not close enough here. It's got to be way up there so the, in the fire. The wood's supposed to be in the fire. Otherwise, you're going to set the yeah. world famous dreamland got on it. fire. Got it. 
You know, my fireplace at home has a couple of remote controls. I, I press the button. Of course it does. <laughs> and it goes on. What is this wood you speak of? Oh, my goodness. The hickory. We give you one job. That yeah. needs to be on you had one job. I, I, honestly, I was a little afraid of that this morning. I was watching. <laughs> I think Maria and uh, David cut me a break on that. Thankfully, our ribs had already been uh, cooked before yeah. you got in there. That sauce is, you know, I, I think I figured out the secret of the sauce. There's a little twang and mustard, a little twang in there. I right. think that's what I'm going with. That's the secret, and yeah. now the secret's out. Here's Tugga Bailoa with a throw. Got a man down the field. Of course he does. Devontae Smith taken out of bounds at the 15 by Gillespie. And Smith is shaking up, grabbing the back of his leg. It's a 57-yard gain. Painful. Unbelievable play, throw and catch, but that is a not a good sight for Alabama holding the back. He's going to come in right out here. It's just a double move. You see he beats the receiver, the DB right there, just on a pump and go on the sluggo, and this ball is perfectly thrown. Let's see if we can see. Yeah, he pulls up there at the end, Steve. That, that does not look good for Devontae Smith. Sophomore from Louisiana. Coaching staff told us he catches everything. And there's a great example of that. And then the pain to follow. Looked like when he tried to slow down there is when that hamstring grabbed him. That's a live look at the hallway. Devontae Smith helped off the field being attended to. At exactly 100 receiving yards to this point. From the 17, Damian Harris taken down inside the 15. Kale Garrett, who is said to know the defense as well as any coach on the defensive staff, makes the stop in the middle there. Yeah, now he's uh, all the leadership uh, is on his shoulders. He's more of a quiet leader. Therese Hall was the emotional leader of that defense. But certainly he has been an outstanding football player for Barry Odom for a long time. Second down and seven. Just inside the 15. Bama trying to add to their lead. And looking to throw for it. All sorts of time and it is caught. Touchdown. Hale Henches. But there is a flag. We'll check the marker. Holding on the offense, number 73. 10-yard penalty for the previous spot. Repeat second down. That's Jonah Williams, who grades out about 90%. That's going to cut into his grade a little bit. He is right here, matched up one-on-one -on, -one on the outside with Trey Williams. And he gets that, that arm. Yeah, it looked like Trey Williams was going down, right? But I just, we talk about how hard it is for defensive players, right. you know, when they're trying to hit somebody, hit a receiver in the air. It's also hard on these offensive linemen when it, when a defender is going down and they land on top of them. Right. It's almost like the official automatically throws the flag. It's tough on the officials too, man. It's not easy for anybody out there. Set up the screen. Harris beautifully inside the ten, picking up blockers, and down to the three. Garrett made sure he did not. Hit pay dirt. And Alex Leatherwood comes up limping a little bit. I mean, how much composure this team has, right? You, you get a touchdown, the emotion of that, and then it's called back. And now you're behind the sticks, and you just throw a screen pass, and you're right back in business. First and goal. Garrett in the middle again, making sure Harris doesn't score. Nick Bolton there as well. And Jonah Williams is not happy. He's taking it out on this defense now. That last that last play is a pancake block in the end zone. I mean, he is he's going to take out his frustration. See the big fellow there. Jonah Williams, one of the best offensive linemen in all of college football. Maybe the best. Tunga Bailoa lofts one. It's a jump ball, and it's batted out of play. Demarcus Acey made sure Henry Ruggs couldn't bring it down. Well, you know that Nick Saban, what he wants to do here. You know, he wants to, to get behind that offensive line and run this football in. 
And it's clear that Mike Loxley has 100% control on this offense because that would not have been a Nick Saban call right there. Missouri a little late running off the field. Third down and goal from the three. Pressure up the middle, the throw off the fingertips of Irv Smith. And it'll be fourth down. And if you dare to blitz to a tongue of Iloa, which they're going to do here, just coming off the edge, you're going to speed up his mechanics and a little bit of an inaccurate throw. Leads to the incompletion, but you take a risk when you blitz Tonga Vailoa because there's so many weapons on the outside. They're all one on one when you're blitzing him, and that time they got away with it. Here's Bullivus on for his easiest attempt of the night. He's already hit from 30 and 28. This one from 21 knocked it through. This won't make Nick Saban happy. Five trips into the red zone, three field goals. Oh, you know he's going to find that to use uh, next week for motivation. And a 20-point lead at the half won't be satisfactory either. Not for Coach Saban. We'll be right back. Some teammates had to come over and help him up. Jogged over the sideline. Trainers were looking at him. Had his head down. I couldn't tell if it was frustration or not, but it's worth noting that he did change his knee brace, a bulkier one we saw him with in the pregame, to just one of the, a very lighter one. You know, one of the, the pull, ones you pull up and slide over your knee, and it, it doesn't seem like it's giving him nearly as much support as the bulkier one. We'll watch for that. Maybe he's not going to not long for this game. Yeah, he's got a sleeve on now. Before he had the real. The real knee bracer, you see that one? That was just uncomfortable. I've worn that in the past. And you put that thing on, try to go out there and warm up, and you, you catch your other leg and you, you slice yourself, and it just doesn't feel good. So if you don't absolutely need to have that clunky brace, which it doesn't seem like he does, then you just go with the sleeve. See if Mizzou can get some points here before the half. Two and a half to play. Drew Locke throwing and completing to Jalen Knox. More on Tua Tungabailoa, so many eye-popping numbers. He's just the second quarterback, Reese, in the last 15 years with three first-half touchdown passes in three straight SEC conference games. The only other guy to do it, uh, last name is football, Johnny. <laughs> so, oh, that looks like, look at that clear face mask. Beatty was grabbed down, and there is a flag down. Maybe two markers down. A lot of dirty laundry on the field. Guys, I saw it. It was a face mask. And the other one? Both guys saw the face mask. It was so blatant. There are definitely I, two fouls on the I, play. That I could see it up here. <laughs> if there weren't two fouls, there wouldn't be so much discussion. Isaiah Bugs is saying one of them. Zamazu, I'm talking to you. <laughs> you see Two Durant. fouls on the play. Personal foul clipping on the offense. 77. Personal foul face mask on the defense. Those fouls are offset. Penalties will cancel. Repeat first down. Told you. <laughs> I got 50%. That's Paul Adams, the right tackle. A lot of times when you're running the ball away. You'll get a guy like this is trying to cut on the backside. He's trying to get that guy down on the ground. Boy. It's been a couple of calls here tonight that uh, are marginal at best. And that, that looked like it was on the jersey. I get it. It's hard to be an official, okay? Right. But they got families too, Greece. <laughs> okay. Okay. They got people watching the game cheering you, for them. Do you want me not to point out when they're bad calls? I want you to point everything out. Okay. They don't have home games either, these guys in stripes. Okay. It's a tough job. Trust me. I know it. Okay. Broadcasting easy. Yeah. Officiating difficult. On first down and 10. Lock through that one away. And if you're Derek Dooley here calling plays for Drew Locke, you just got to get a little bit of something going positive before halftime. Something that you can build on in the second half. There's a lot of football left in this game. 
And Missouri's got a lot of playmakers. Yes, some of them are hurt, but I haven't. We haven't called uh, the tight end Okuye Boonham's name. You're right, in a long time. A long time. He had a big clutch. What we thought at the time was a clutch third down catch to keep a drive alive, but that was a long time ago. Lock to throw, and there he is. You speak of Albert O, and he appears. Got to get him involved, and now you're in a two-minute offense where you're throwing the football. Just feed that man right there. He's your best, most consistent pass catcher. Third down situations. This is where I like getting the football to Tyler Beatty out of the backfield. Beatty is their star in these two minute drives. Not performing even the wide receivers. Beatty sneaks out. Looked like Locke wanted to hit him, and instead he was hit. Christian Miller came in to get a good piece of Drew Locke. As Adams is shaken up leaving the field. It's just where you got to go through your reads as a quarterback. You're going to have a shallow cross coming this way, and here comes Beatty out this way. You got to get to Beatty. He's the guy that's open in this situation. They double cover the shallow cross, and there he is. That's the read that Drew Locke needs to make more consistent for this team to have a chance. For Tony, back to punt. His third punt opportunity of the night. Get it in the air. Jalen Waddle will let it bounce, and it is down at the one yard line. Adnan Burt, take it away. All right, Leafs, thank you very much. Coming up in the Mercedes Benz half to report some top 10 shakeups as UW goes down, Georgia goes down, and Penn State goes down as well. Also, we'll tell you about what's happening in the big house. I know Brian Gracie's locked in on Wisconsin and Michigan, and a bad day for Auburn. What has happened to their offense? Join me, Jesse Palmer, and Joy Galloway. Dreamland is our studio here in Bristol. Leaves back to you. <laughs> they should serve that in the calf. Uh, Tavon Ross made a nice play to down that football at the one yard line. So we'll learn something about Alabama. How do they play this, Grease? Uh, quarterback sneak. Just minute 13 left. Is Saban looking for more <laughs> up 20? Looked like Tua almost got stepped on there by one of the offensive linemen. Take a look. Yeah, the right, the right guard steps on him. If he falls down right there, that's two points. Backup uh, right guard Deontay Brown in for Alex Leatherwood. You know, Missouri spent two timeouts earlier in this spot. They would have had a chance if they had their three timeouts. Put some pressure on Alabama. Not let them run out the half. Damian Harris for one. We get into the final minute of the half. See Alabama in the first half. Averaging 40 points per game. Tonight they're off the pace. They're having an off what's, night. What's Greece. going on? Yeah. <laughs> hey, McShay, when you <laughs> when you talk to Coach Saban, <laughs> I know I'm him, in trouble when you can't him, even get the question out. Before ask laughing. him what's wrong. Yeah, he'll love that. <laughs> they're 10 points off their season average at the half. Waiting for Coach Shaven. And here he is with Todd. Coach, you had the injury last week to Trayvon Diggs, the cornerback. How would you assess the play of your secondary and defense? Well, we're going okay. I mean, we've got some stops for getting some decent pressure on the guy, but you know, I, th I think the biggest concern is we haven't finished drives in the red zone. We got three field goals and we got the ball down in there tight. We need to score a touchdown. Yeah, I was going to ask you, what have you seen from Tua in the, in the offense? Tua is okay. I mean, we're doing okay. They're doing a good job of rushing. They're playing a lot of man to man, so it's a little closer coverage, but we're taking advantage of some opportunities, which we have to continue to do. And we have to be able to have balance and run the ball. Thanks, coach. All right, thank you. Five trips to the red zone for Alabama in this first half, three field goals. Bama by 20. Back to Adnan. Joey set for second half action. Here in Tuscaloosa. Crimson Tide up by a score of 30 to 10. Some 10 points below the Tide's average. We open up the second half. They're staying to the end. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> 
Cubs fans talk a good game with their side. Check back in about 90 minutes is my guess. Thirty to ten, although Mizzou does get the football. Fair catch at the two. They'll bring it out to the 25-yard line. Everybody knows about the offense. Chris, what about the defense? Yeah, that was the big question coming into this game with all these young, new players. They gave up 31 points last week and 172 yards on the ground to Arkansas. They have come to play in this football game up front. Quentin Williams and Raekwon Davis. Then Savion Smith stepping in for the injured Trayvon Diggs made this play on the first drive and then some pressure on Drew Locke forced two turnovers. So yes the, the answer to the defensive questions has been emphatic in the first half in my opinion. See what the locker room adjustments will bring for this Missouri offense as we open up quarter number three. Lock off the play fake trying to set up the screen to Okue Bunam. so much criticism from last week with this Alabama defense we talked about the Arkansas game certainly a lot of this was in the second half too with some of the of the backups so you can't put it all on the on the starters but that was what uh, Nick Saban chose to pick on <laughs> this past week and, and they responded he's always going to find something yeah. on the film that's good coaching yeah but that was legit gave up 31 points to Arkansas a week ago third down upcoming here Looks like Devontae Smith tried to come out and give it a go, but uh, I think that's a wise move to put him on the shelf. Injured that hamstring, it looked like, in the first half. Alabama will be at Tennessee next week. Missouri will be home for Memphis. Third and four. And flags fly, and you hear the whistles. Prior to the snap. Ball start, offense number 77. Five yard penalty, it remains third down. I talked to Coach Odom coming out of the half, and he said, Listen, our eyes weren't too wide. The guys know that we can hang with this team. We're running the football better than we thought, but he said, To, to be to totally honest with you, we've got to get a fir uh, first down and then a couple first downs because this thing could get away from you the way their offense is going. I will say this, he is refreshingly honest. Yeah. I know we appreciate that. Lock on third and nine on the check down to Beatty. Beatty had to get free and could not. And it'll be a three and out. Mac Wilson made sure along with Shaheem Carter. And Alabama has been successful in making this predominantly a, a one-dimensional game for, for Missouri. They're they're running the ball a little bit, but not like they've been running it. Demario Crockett has been silent in this game, rushing the football. They've contained the, the rushing attack from Missouri. And once you do that, it's it's over for Alabama coming against you at the pass. Corey Fatoni for his fourth punt attempt. Jalen Waddle. We'll let it bounce. Bama will take over at the 27 yard line. Take a look at today's unexpected outcome brought to you by Exxon Mobil. And I guess it was unexpected that uh, Alabama would have these uh, struggles in the red zone. I guess we're trying to find something right. But they had five trips and they had kicked three field goals. You heard Nick Saban talk about it walking into the locker room. If you're going to nitpick this was the area. I wouldn't be shocked if this was a Part of the uh, press conference. Greasy, what are you, you getting brainwashed? <laughs> I would start firing coordinators. Yeah. Right? I would start benching players. What is going? What is wrong with Alabama? <laughs> on the ground, to Damian Harris reverses field, stays on his feet, and has first down yardage at Sports Center. We used to run the panic meter, right? <laughs> and you know, it was with Cleveland with the Cavaliers, LeBron James, right. they lose one game or two games in a row. <laughs> the panic meter on the Cavs. It's a gain of eleven. Uh, no panic. Just joking here. And Tua Tunga Bailoa remains in this football game. He has yet to see a fourth quarter snap. We'll see how that shakes out here tonight. 
It's Jacobs in motion. Talk about Loa. Wants some more. And the closest player to it was a Missouri Tiger, Joshua Bledsoe. And that's the first time tonight that I've seen Tonga Vailoa get a little greedy. And uh, that, that play was not there. The safety was way over the top. It was a good job not, not biting on the fake. Jerry Judy was running a double move, and it's a nice job on the back end by Joseph, or sorry, Joshua Bledsoe of not biting. Tonga Vailoa to throw, and his receiver slipped down. Tyrell Shavers. His first target, freshman from Louisville, Texas. Stop the presses. He's missed two in a row. Yes. Okay. Panic meter. <laughs> but that could have been a touchdown. If that was an accurate throw there, Missouri brought an all-out pressure and was one-on-one -on, -one on the outside with the slant. He just threw a little bit high. You're just joining us. We saw Jalen Hurts for a couple of snaps in one series. Actually caught a pass. Third down and ten. Talk about low will take off for the first time. He's got plenty of green and crosses the imaginary yellow line for first down yardage. Now we'll see if he's okay on the way up. Yeah. It's a gain of 11. It's kind of slow getting up. Still not off the turf. And now he'll sit right back down. He's holding the back of that right leg. You see where he has that brace on. And he holding the back of his leg, looked like he went down kind of awkward. Let's see if we can see something. Well, he, he doesn't look like he's full speed right there. It doesn't look. No, he, he hasn't been right all night. I mean, it hasn't been terrible, but this is the first time he's run the entire game. Right. And you could just tell coming out that the first couple of throws, he's. He's not driving and, and following through the way, and I think that led to a couple of overthrows. And, and here he takes off running the very first time and clearly does not have that burst of acceleration we're used to seeing. And as you look at mom and dad, they're wondering what I'm thinking is why even keep him in the game at this point anymore? Up 20 here, early stages of third quarter. Well, you know, sometimes they go, you go into the locker room, you sit in the locker room, and you get a little bit tight, a little bit cold, and then you come out here, and then you have two inaccurate throws, and then you, you take off to run. Maybe he was just a little bit uh, tight coming out of the locker room. So two things here at play. Tonga Bailoa getting medical attention. The officials are also trying to figure out the spot of the ball, exactly where he went into that slide. As you saw, Jalen Hurts is loosening up, getting ready. As Tungovaloa is on his feet. While we were away, Tua Tungovaloa heading for the pop-up medical tent to receive some attention, likely for that knee. On his run, which looked like first down yardage, he went into his slide a little too early. He's marked a yard shy of the first down. And this is Skyler DeLong, right out of witness protection. And he shanks it. Wow. Two and a, you're talking about a rusty punter. More than two and a half games, Alabama has gone without punting. Mm. 156 minutes of playing time dating back to the Texas A&M game. That was the last time Skylar DeLong and Alabama punted. And in the end, with 13 in the medical tent, that's a 13-yard punt. Well, you see the disgust on Nick Saban's face. I wouldn't be shocked. If it's anything shorter than fourth and five, the remainder of this game, if he doesn't just go for it. It's your best unit, your offense. Why not put leave them on the field? Wow. So Mizzou will start with great field position from their own 41. Drew Locke comes out firing down the sideline and Knox could not bring it in. Savion Smith on the coverage, but it was there. Oh, what a great opportunity for Missouri here. It's almost like a turnover. And, and Tonga Bailoa is out of the game. You decide to take a shot right off the bat. Beautiful throw here from Drew Locke. Would have been an unbelievable catch, but Knox made a similar catch in the first half. Yes, he did. True freshman from Mansfield, Texas, who have Tiger fans dreaming of Jeremy Macklin as Knox wears that same uniform number nine. Forward progress for 
Maybe a yard. Tamari a Crockett, not much there. Knox came up a little bit gimpy. But he looks Knox. angry as well. Yep. Third, down. third down and seven. Big third down here. Look for Alberto in the slot. Looking that way. Lockett all sorts of trouble. He's going to be taken down. Dropped at the 36. Isaiah Bugs was there with some help from his friends. Third down and seven plus. You're going to have matchup coverage on the outside. Combo on all four wide receivers. There's nowhere to go with the football. And that's the hallmark of Nick Saban defensively in third and long situations. He's going to rush with four, and he's going to play coverage. There's nowhere for him to go with the football. Second sack of the night for the Bama defense. So a golden opportunity for Mizzou goes awry. Jalen Waddell. You've got to put a flag. Looked like he had, did not have a chance to make that catch, and you see the flag on the field. Looked like that ball hit him, but there was not enough room for him to make the catch. Kick catch interference. Let's see. Interference with the opportunity to catch a kick. Kicking team number nine. 15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Wow. Mark that series, right? You get you get a basically a turnover because you, you get a shank punt. You, you go three and out on offense. And now you just don't have the discipline and you get too close you give him a free 15 yards and the ball's back at midfield. It's just the unforced errors for Missouri tonight that have killed him. That's Tyree Gillespie the sophomore from Ocala on the special teams mistake. And it is Jalen Hurts. And I don't know why Bama would even consider bringing Tungabailoa back into this game but we'll see. Hurts on the ground. Josh Jacobs to midfield. And that pop up medical tent has gotten a little more crowded. There's Mama. Diane Tungabaloa in the check on her son. Be interested to see how Missouri changes and plays Jalen Hurts in this offense differently than potentially with Tua. In the ball game, already they're playing a little bit more aggressive man coverage, expecting more run with six or seven guys in the box. On the ground for Jacobs. Christian Holmes, the stop, bring up a third down and short. You know, with other backup quarterbacks, you might be concerned, but. What a luxury. Yeah, 26 and two. As a starter, and he lost his job. Yeah. That's more, that's less about Hertz, more about Tunga Bailoa. On third and one, is Jacobs going to be short, fourth down, and less than a yard? I'm a little surprised that they came out and ran the ball three times in a row. You know that Mike Loxley understands that Missouri defensively is going to challenge Jalen Hurts to throw the football. You got good looks to throw the ball into, and. Everything we talked with Loxley and Saban about yesterday is how much Jalen Hurts has improved as a passer in training camp and through the first part of this season. I want to see him throw the football, quite honestly. He got a good look at what Skylar DeLong was looking at. If they came up short, that might have been another punting situation. Henry Ruggs with all that speed inside the 40. And now he he's shaking up a little bit. Oh boy. Devontae Smith already out of this football game and in the locker room and now the second of this dynamic trio of sophomore wide receivers Henry Ruggs he get rolled up on Garrett's got a hold of him Boy. yanking on that leg a little bit oh. at the end second and three Hertz puts it in the belly of Jacobs and he has the first down well you've got three starters on offense three of your most explosive yes. players and the quarterback and two wide receivers out 
of this football game and this game is not out of reach Steve it's a 20 point game. Both Tunga Bailoa and Ruggs going out here in the third quarter. Devontae Smith injured in that second quarter. And they'll keep it on the ground with Jacobs. Able to cut it upfield. Ronnell Perkins made the stop as we inch towards seven minutes to play here in the third. Alabama by 20. You lose all these playmakers at these positions and the luxury of, of bringing in a quarterback 26 and 2 turning around and handing the ball to a guy like Josh Jacobs and Damian Harris uh, behind this offensive line and they're just continuing to go right down the field not throwing it like they did in the first half but on the ground the luxury of having five star players everywhere you look Najee Harris sent back Byers to stop. Well, we were talking earlier about how Loxley is in control of this offense, and it was very evident because of how much they were throwing in first down. I know there's obviously been a quarterback change, but you have to wonder if Nick Saban turned to Loxley and said, hey, you know what? Let's let's take the air out of the ball a little bit. Yeah, he might be right. I mean, I, I think it has a lot to do with who's hurt and on the sideline. But now you've run the ball, Todd, six or seven right. times in a row. Perfect time here for Jalen Hurts and play action over the top. Trying to set it up for Derek Keefe, his first grab, then his fourth down. Yeah, so you're going to have some new receivers out there now, Keefe being one of them. But if I'm Missouri, I'm just going to double team Jerry Judy and, and let the rest of these guys try to beat me. We've, we've seen this shot too many times. Yeah. This shot of Alabama players heading off. This will be a long field goal attempt. 52 yards for Joseph Bullivis. His career long is 47. Did hit a 52 yarder in high school. This is in high school. And the score remains 30 to 10. As the Tunga Bailoa family exits the medical pop up tent. Although two will remains on first down Tyler Beatty will lean forward for a yard Quinn and Williams made the stop. Now this is Missouri's opportunity down three scores five minutes to play and Alabama is banged up on the other side. We joked about it in the open Greece and nobody ever is going to have any sympathy for the number one Crimson Tide. But here they are feeling the effect, especially on the offense. No, but Drew Locke in this offense, they need to start making some plays. Ever since the first quarter of this game, they really haven't been able to get anything sustained offensively, especially in the run game. Timeout, Missouri. First timeout of the half. And Missouri will spend this will be the timeout. A 30 second timeout. Well, we mentioned the injuries offensively. First one was Devontae Smith. Looked like he came up a little bit gimpy with a hamstring. And then the, the, the real one that is worrying everybody was this one with Tua Tonga Vailoa. He started the game with a hefty knee brace, took that off, and then he's been in the medical tent ever since. And then Henry Ruggs got wrenched in his leg, and he's in the locker room. So three starters out for Alabama offensive. And Brian. They, Alabama has been surprisingly open with me about all of these other injuries, but they, I, you know, I asked the guy who's been working with me tonight, and he, he said, listen, man, I have no idea. And they're telling me absolutely nothing. But the, the beauty of Alabama is, and this is where they separate themselves from the rest of the country, is the depth that the Crimson Tide have. People joke, hey, can they just throw out another five-star athlete? They're only half kidding. They are so deep, and that's what separates them from everyone else but that depth will be tested here tonight lock throwing on the run and misfires over the head of Jonathan Johnson Well, the other way we opened this game was talking about the 180 flip in the narrative for how Alabama wins games right for 12 years Nick Saban has won on defense they've been winning this year because of offense and in impressive fashion now in the second half of this game they've got a 20 point lead you know Nick Saban is salivating at this opportunity for his defense to reclaim some of that status as a, a top flight defense. Oh. 
And that throw, an errant throw. Too low and behind Jonathan Johnson. So a lock comes up small again in a big spot. Well, they're, they're having trouble protecting him on third down, so Derek Dooley decides to roll out. I don't mind that decision, but they don't block Quinn and Williams on the backside. That forces Drew Locke to throw the ball early and off timing with J Jonathan Johnson. Tigers just 3 of 11 on third down conversions. Fifth straight opportunity to punt for Corey Fatoni who appreciates the dry working conditions tonight and that monsoon last week let a snap go right through his fingers. And that punt is muffed and recovered by Jalen Waddell. Nearly disastrous for Alabama. The 52 yard punt. Great defense from Alabama again. Calusa. And this is just moments ago. Tua Tungabailoa emerging from the medical pop up tent. Headed right onto the field and had his helmet on, had his brace on too. But it's Jalen Hurts in the game at quarterback, handing off to Najee Harris. And well, Tua, Four minutes to play in the third quarter. Tua went into that uh, medical tent or with, without the brace on and came out with it on. Uh, went right up to Jalen Hurts and, and Nick Saban. He says, hey, go get him. Uh, so it, it seems like, at least for right now on this drive, he's there for emergency purposes if something happens to Jalen Hurts. Here's Hurts on the ground. Harris, first down yardage. Here's Adnan Burke. All right, Leafs, thank you. I want to update you this time what's happening in Ann Arbor. Just for Brian Greasy, check out Shea Patterson on the quarterback keeper. Scrambles in for the touchdown. 21-7 Wolverines. It's over on ABC. Grace, rejoice. I, I hope that to Joey Galloway is enjoying that to score at <laughs> as much as I am. <laughs> That's cool. As you laugh, <laughs> as you chuckle. On the ground, a Harris. Another first down. So this is the first time this year Alabama has had three straight possessions with no points. We'll see what happens in this fourth possession. Well I think it's going to be on this offensive line now and, the, and these running backs. And the thing that you do gain with Jalen Hurts now is the element of the quarterback run game. So but I, I'm not so sure Mike Loxley with Tua Tungvaluwa hurt on the sideline wants to put Jalen Hurts in harm's way on a consistent basis. There's a flag down as Hurts sets the throw down the middle of the field. It's Judy. He's got it. Beat Christian Holmes. We'll check the marker. Offside. Defense number 39. Telling you to play the play is the first time. The 44 yard pass and catch will stand. Well, Jerry Judy's healthy. We know that. <laughs> Might be a lot of other guys hurting, but Jalen Hurts is no dummy. He's going to throw the ball as far as he can to Jerry Judy, who got pushed by Christian Holmes in the back, but kept his concentration over the shoulder and continues to make plays no matter who's in there at quarterback. Judy, three catches, 147 yards. He had six touchdowns his first three games of the season. Had the opening score tonight some 23 seconds in. Todd, down to you. Well, guys, I just got an update on Tua. He said that he re-injured that same knee, put the brace on. He's questionable to return, and it's obviously, as he said, it has everything to do with, with the scoreboard, as he pointed up to the scoreboard. So sounds like he's available to return if things get dicey, but they would rather him not come back in. Yep, I think that's the smart, the right move. Play the scoreboard. As Hertz and company look for some insurance here. Harris trying to get outside. Outside of Khalil Oliver. Oliver did a good job staying with him. More good news for Alabama. Henry Ruggs coming back out of the locker room. Ruggs is the fastest player on Alabama. Since they started recording the speed, the speed limits of these players, Ruggs clocked in, Greece, at 24 miles an hour. Wow. That's like not on a scooter or anything. That's him. <laughs> 
That's him running. And they've been doing that for a few years now for the NFL draft, the combine. Usually like 22, 23 is, is about the highest. 24, I, I can't remember. We got a chance to sit down and meet with him. He talks fast, too. <laughs> Well, he got back into the game fast. He came right out of the locker room, didn't warm up or anything, went right into the game. I think Oliver was shaken up, making that tackle. He's checked out. Here's Hertz to throw. As usual, a great protection. But Hertz can do this for you. Running forward, and he stopped at a 16 by Cale Garrett. You know, it's interesting. Jalen Hurts is going to have to change his mindset, right? He came into this game thinking, well, I'll get a couple rushes. I'll catch a ball, right? He already did that. He was an offensive weapon. Now he's the quarterback, and he's got to change his mindset to, if I get out there and run, I need to get down and slide, protect my body, as opposed to coming into the game, he thought he was going to be a physical presence. See the numbers on Hertz. That number one spot is definitely within his range. Final 35 ticks in the third quarter. Blitz picked up nicely. Hurts on the move. Inside the 10, and he takes a shot out of bounds. It's Cale Garrett who's in on every play for the Tigers. And it's gonna bring up a fourth down. Great pickup by Jonah Williams coming back on the inside. Gives Hurts a little opportunity. They're gonna go for it here on fourth and short. And I agree with him. The way this offensive line is coming off. See, we got a timeout. We did. Part of the snap. Timeout, Missouri. Second timeout of the half. Missouri spends their second timeout. We'll come back with a fourth and one inside the 10. 60 second break. Out of the Mizzou timeout. Just in time for a fourth and one for Alabama. Up three scores. Looking for another touchdown here. Fourth and one from the six and a half. Burks, Damian Harris didn't get there. And Mizzou stands. The Tigers defense takes over. It looked like he had to get to the five yard line. So let's take a look at this from the side view. Cal uh, Garrett, of course. There, yeah, did not get there. This this Missouri defense, they have been stout tonight. They have had to deal with turnovers, certainly from their offense, and they lost their emotional leader in Therese Hall. And this linebacking crew has has stood tough, especially here in the second half, giving up no points. Any thoughts on not going for the field goal there, making a four-score game? <laughs> Keeps it at 20. Another opportunity for Drew Locke. From his end zone. Pump and he's taken down. Quinn and Williams. That's one way to add some points. They go, we don't need the field goal. Forget the three. We'll take the two on the safety. Fourth quarter on the way. Look at our Buick drive recap. The last time Alabama had the football. Hey, got uh, Jalen Hurts going, throwing the football to Jerry Judy downfield. Then on third down, Hurts tried to extend to get the first down, came up just a little bit short, and they were not able to convert on fourth down. Got the stop from Missouri, and on the very next play, Drew Locke pumps. And gets sacked in the end zone for a safety. And Alabama regains the momentum. The first Alabama safety since the SEC championship game against Florida in 2015. And because of the safety, Alabama avoids a scoreless quarter <laughs> on the final play. Josh Jacobs out beyond the 40, beyond the 50. And to the other 40 of Missouri. That's a return for Josh Jacobs of 50 yards. Well, tomorrow morning, NFL countdown, all access.
with Jared Goff, who's led the Rams to a 5 0 start. We'll take on the Broncos. Then on Monday night, Aaron Rodgers and the Packers look to bounce back from the loss to the Lions, and the Niners come to Lambeau Field. Coverage kicks off with Monday night countdown at 6 Eastern on ESPN. Speaking of knee braces, yeah, Aaron Rodgers <laughs> said to have a bit of a setback this week. And we and the rest of the country will watch for that. With Tua Tungabailoa watching, here's Jalen Hurts dealing. And it's Henry Ruggs in the game and catching. And now a Tiger needs some assistance. That's Christian Holmes. And he's just cramping up. Yeah, he's cramping up. You know, we talked uh, coming into this ball game about the lack of adversity that Alabama has had to face this season. They have rolled through every single game, every single opponent, and uh, and finally now there is a little bit of adversity with some injuries on the offensive side. And hopefully, Tua Tagovailoa is is healthy enough to continue uh, to play quarterback next week if that if that's warranted. Uh, but you're finding out now a little bit about when adversity hits. How does this team respond? And Nick Saban, I guarantee you, this is what he's going to talk about yeah. after the game. Is, is we needed this adversity, we found, we've got it. We're responding to it both defensively. Our offensive line now is coming off running the football. Jalen Hurts was he ready when his number was called? Right, he's been on the sideline, and uh, Jalen's getting some reps, some much needed reps this season because he hasn't been throwing the ball a ton. And you want to be battle tested? No question. Come SEC championship time. And certainly the college football playoff. But then he'll quickly shift over to the red zone offense. <laughs> <laughs> Jalen Hurts, by the way, five for five for 69 yards passing. Just loaded in every way. A wealth of riches for this Alabama squad. Waddle could not hang on there. You know, we talked about that. With uh, both coordinators really for Alabama, these blowout wins that affords Alabama the luxury of playing other players, getting them the opportunity, getting players some reps who normally wouldn't get them in close fourth quarter games. And I was thinking, well, that perpetuates their greatness next year, these younger players. And they're like, no, no, perpetuates the greatness next week. Yeah. And you, you just, you never know when these injuries, will, the bug will come up and bite you. Especially, you know, really three key offensive players all happening here tonight. What a luxury to have a Jalen Hurts able to throw to Henry Ruggs who looks just fine. And the beat rolls on for the Crimson Tide. Big time throw from Jalen Hurts. Third down. Uh, identifies man coverage. Just throws this ball out in front of Ruggs. It's well executed against man to man coverage and it brings up first and goal inside the five. 29 yards down to the three. Seventh red zone opportunity. Hertz wants it, and he won't get it. Banged out at the one by Cale Garrett and company. Garrett came up with the football. Jalen Hurts, 28 starts as an Alabama quarterback. This was the area of the field that he absolutely owned. He's 220 pounds. You put him in the backfield next to Damian Harris, who goes 215. Those two guys should touch the ball every single time inside the five. Damian Harris bouncing outside for the score. Touchdown, Alabama. Damian Harris is such a heady player. He's got great vision. He's low to the ground. He's tough, strong. There was nowhere to go in the middle on that play, and he just bounced to the outside for the easy touchdown. To some, this is a rather significant extra point. Joseph Bulbas on and boots it through. And it's Alabama by 29 if you're into such things. <laughs> This time it's Damian Harris. It's not down the middle. I'll try the outside. For six. A big Alabama tradition. They have brought back Dixie Land Delight. 
And as far as I can tell, Greece, it was Dixieland De Delight done right. Yes. The students have been fighting to get this back. The university wanted to make sure they cleaned up the language. They helped him out with the proper words on the scoreboard. <laughs> and on his homecoming weekend, Dixieland Delight makes its triumphant return. Similar to Adnan Verk. <laughs> Leaves it off at Dixieland Delight, but I do have an update on West Virginia and Iowa State. Brock Purdy to Deshante Jones. Check out this catch. Acrobatic to say the least. And it's Jones's first catch of the game. Do we have another upset brewing? Iowa State's up, Steve. Thank you, Adnan. It has been a fascinating day and night around college football. Think about Washington losing, Penn State losing. West Virginia is currently behind, right? right? We saw Georgia number two Georgia go down in a down, big yeah. way Boy. at LSU. On the ground, it's round tree. And by the way, the teams that won had their hands full. Ohio State was in a game today. So was Notre Dame for a long time. Yeah, boy, you talk about Ohio State, and a lot of people were talking about that offense, you know, matching up with Alabama's offense, and they looked awful today. Right. They couldn't run the football. They couldn't stop the run against Minnesota. Texas in a one-score game, UCF in a one-point game. So there will be a, look, there's a shakeup. We joke these are subject to change every week, but I mean, look at some of these scores. And, and LSU, after a tough loss a week ago, rebounding, certainly that was a, the statement of the, of the day, in my opinion. And Oregon, how about Oregon? They don't forget about them in the Pac-12. Minnesota gave the Buckeyes all they could handle for a long part of that game. Here's third and one. Jalen Knox out to the 40. He's got first down yardage. I don't think you're going to see any quit in these uh, Missouri Tigers. Certainly that last touchdown kind of sealed this yes. game. I I've been impressed though with Missouri's defense. Yep. And outside of those big plays in the first half downfield of Judy. Now they've they've done held their own against this Alabama run team. This Missouri offense has one first down this half. And for those of you just joining us. This was a three point game at the end of the first quarter. This was 13 to 10. And it's been all Alabama since then. 26 unanswered. Here's Locke. For a few. But to me, the story of this, this football game, defensively for Alabama, you know, if they give it up 10 points, this is a Missouri team that has scored consistently. They come into this game averaging 39 points a game with a, a potent passing attack and a running game that had been getting more and more steam and a veteran offensive line, and there has just been nothing available against this Alabama defense. Roundtree really close. Phil Mathis stopped them like right at the marker. The late flag come in and Raquan Davis was mixing it up in the backfield. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number 99. The penalty is 15 oh. yards in the succeeding spot. Automatic first down. Wow. Raquan boxing's coming up after this game. That's a right and a left combo. Yeah, and that, you know, complete loss of composure there from Raekwon Davis. And Nick Saban sees it immediately, pulls him out of that football game. You know, the question is, we'll go back and look at that again to see what happened to promote, promote him to do that. But they always catch the second guy in those acts. Can't get ejected for throwing a punch? I'm not sure why he wasn't ejected for throwing a punch. There were two of them.
timeout, Missouri. Third and final timeout of the half. 11 minutes left. Again, it's fight night on ESPN. But the boxing is coming up after the game. Not here in the fourth quarter. From Tuscaloosa. Raekwon Davis about to get an earful from the head coach. He was trying to lobby his way back onto the field, and Saban said, no, I, I got another idea. And I have a feeling it's going to be a long week for Raekwon yeah. Davis. He's lucky, lucky he's still in the game. In a, in a time where we're kicking out kids in college football all the time. Yeah. For some questionable targeting penalties. That seemed rather obvious. That's a great that's a great point Steve right that's a great point. Let's go back and take a look. Pendleton's the left guard here and all he's doing is blocking Mac Wilson coming through the, the B gap. He's blocking him and then he falls down on top of him which happens on most every play and Davis is trying to protect Mac Wilson but throwing punches is not the way to do that. So you're right throwing Therese Hall out of the game right. in the first half for making a tackle and Raekwon oh. Davis still in the game. See if we can give you another look at the punches thrown. It was blatantly obvious. And obviously the officials saw something. They saw enough to throw the flag for the unsportsmanlike conduct. But if you saw something, how did you miss this? And, the and right, Davis is now back in the game, which shocks me. Right left combination. Yeah. And anyway, stay with it. There's the knee to the back to follow. Yeah, as he's getting up, he gives him a knee in the back. I mean, that's that's three for the price of one. And Davis is back in the game. Right in the middle. You better keep an eye now because now Missouri's offensive line wants retribution. Third down and eight. Ten to go. Locke trying to skip out of trouble and can't. Mac Wilson got enough to upend him. Jim Blackwood joining us in the booth. Our officials expert. Jim, I mean, that looked blatant to us. Punches in the back and then the knee. They threw the flag. So why not throw him out of the game? Well, by definition, it meets the definition of fighting, and he should have been ejected. If not, they can go under the flagrant foul, but he should have been ejected. Yeah. And the, uh, Is there anything you can do after the fact there? The conference can look at it. Fourth down and nine. Got to have it. And I think they do. We'll see where they spot the forward progress. It's Jonathan Johnson on the receiving end. I think he came up short. Alabama says it's their football. That was a tremendous throw and catch from Locke and, and Jonathan Johnson, but it's just, it's the little things. It's on fourth down, making sure you get enough yardage for the first down. Look like he caught that ball right at the line. I, I agree. Yeah, I'd take a look at this. He had to get to the 25. He catches the ball at the 25. I think that's a first down. They will take another look at that. We'll check the forward progress. Have an answer when we come back. Yard decoration pumps, or just pumps, if you will. They're composed of approximately 360,000 pieces of tissue pumps, chicken wire, and glue. Oh, wow. As Kenny Main would say, common knowledge. I mean, who didn't know that? <laughs> While we're away, they gave them the first down on the forward progress. Which I think was the right call. That yes. Catch was beyond the 25 yard line there, and then he's contacted. So I thought that was the right call to give them the first down. Keeps this drive alive as we approach nine minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. And Barry Odom, he's still coaching him up. He's still working hard. He'll probably get his two receivers, Nate Brown and Emmanuel Hall, back next week when Memphis comes to town. Memphis played a good game today. I deserve the better feet. Out to Dominic Jacinto. His first catch of the game inside the 20. Patrick Sertan made the stop. You know, if you're looking for silver linings for Missouri, you know, without Emmanuel Hall and Nate Brown the last three games, they have had to get a lot of young players, a lot of experience. Jacinto being one of them. Jalen Knox has become a go-to receiver. Cam Scott. So you add in Nate Brown and Emmanuel Hall now that stretch the field if they're healthy. All of a sudden, this offense is a little bit more balanced. Paul's father passing away unexpectedly a couple of nights ago. It was thought if not for that, he would be here and could have helped the Tigers here today. That close to returning. 
Larry Roundtree on the receiving end, and that will put Mizzou over 200 yards finally in total offense. And I get it. If, if Hall and Brown were close, look, this is a game they weren't going to win here tonight, but they could win a lot of games still the rest of the way. You look at Missouri's schedule, Memphis, Kentucky. Well, Kentucky would be tough. All right, at Florida, that, that'll be tough, too. <laughs> uh, Van, Vandy was pretty good today. Did Tennessee, Tennessee win today. today? Yeah, they won today. They and there's, Auburn. there's Arkansas just scored 31 against Alabama. All right. Hey, you want to play in the SEC, people? <laughs> Every week's a battle. I was sort of <laughs> buying my own argument there for a second. Then I'm I just going to let you go. Then you I know? actually looked down at the <laughs> actual information. There you see. Circle the easy win for him, Greg Grease. What do you got? They're going to get someone. I, you know, that Kentucky game will be very interesting. Uh, Florida, boy, they, they seem to have figured it out. Mm -hmm. They're winning in a lot of different ways. You know, they could beat Vandy. They could beat Tennessee. Or they could beat Arkansas. All what right. was the last three they could beat? There you go. Uh, that Florida-Vandy game was a contentious game today. The head coach is nearly coming to blows. They hugged it out at the end. And I've mentioned Memphis against UCF today gave them everything they could handle. Well, this has been a 14 play drive that started their own 25. It'll just look, it'll just make things more respectable in the newspaper tomorrow, the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Well, all the starters are still out there for Alabama defensively. The starting defensive front seven and, and in the back end. All of them are still out there. Third down and three. Here's Crockett. Gets to the edge and is set flying back by Christian Miller. Nick Saban wants nothing to do with respectable. I mean, he's... If you look at him on the sideline right now, it looks like they're down 10 points. I mean, he has been pacing up and down. This is, I mean, this is the unit they've got to get right if they're going to win a national championship. Well, I, I, Todd, I think they've improved tonight. I, I absolutely agree. I think the pass rush has been huge, and I think they've done a really good job, albeit against a depleted wide receiver yeah. core, but they have played a lot better tonight than they have in some previous games. Well, they got one more play here as a starting defense. This is the 17th play of the drive. Fourth and four. You get a first down. Lofting for the end zone, and instead of the first down, it's picked off. That's how the night started. Savion Smith, his second interception of the game for that Alabama defense. And that's exactly why that unit was still in the game. Nick Saban wanted them to put the, the final stanza on this game. Savion Smith with the interception, and Anthony Jennings with the pressure. For Mizzou, it's a seven-and-a-half-minute drive. That results in zero points and another turnover. Drew Locke's night, rough one. This season, for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities, Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. We thank you, Allstate. Which university wouldn't want to participate in that? I want names and phone numbers. Najee Harris, the ball carrier. Adnan Verk, the update. Leaves you got my name, you got my phone number. Meantime, an update on Miami and Virginia. Malik Rozier in for the Hurricanes and makes it happen with his feet. Scrambling for the touchdown, giving the Hurricanes some life, but Virginia did recover an onside kick up by three, just over two and a half to go. And don't forget, cannot wait for this big time fight. Bud Crawford against Benavidez. It is coming up after your game, Steve. Joe Tessitore on the call. I think Tess tweeted out he expects to have some blood on his very expensive <laughs> suit tonight. I don't know about you, but I always wear my sunglasses when I get taped up. <laughs> Josh Jacobs for Alabama. He's got the first down as we tick down towards five minutes left in the game. Hey, why we have this chance? Being that we are at Alabama, congratulations to our own Reese Davis, who is too humble to tell anybody about this, but we found it some 10 days ago. Reese was inducted into Bama's Communication and Information Sciences Hall of Fame. Uh, good on you, Reese. He's a Hall of Fame guy as well. Question. You can't find anybody has one bad word to say about our pal Reese Davis. So, and he gave us the right place to go have dinner yes, last night. Yes, he did. Too. Let's, hey, let's go two nights in a row. <laughs> we find something good. Good job. Good on you, Reese. And congratulations to you and your family, pal. Harris again for a couple. Four and a half to go here. So the pretty girl in the convertible 
got a little banged up in this game tonight, but we'll come out of this looking just fine. That's how Nick Saban described his team this past week. He said, you know, you see the pretty girl in the convertible. That's, that's what everybody sees from the outside. But when you're inside, you don't see the oil spills. Right. Or the tires are a little low on air. Ball tires. Yeah, yeah. some engine issues. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, but he'll he'll find something to chew on. Actually, there's there's plenty for there's, him. There's a lot to chew on. He can coach him up. He's a master at that. There's no question. That, and that's the, the the magic of of Nick Saban and why he's been so good for so long, because he's always, well not always, most times he's had better talent. Okay, and he'll find a way to get the most out of these guys, despite the fact that they know that they're more talented than the other team most games. You know, recently people have been discussing it's it's a wonder Nick got here. He might have been stayed put in Miami. The Dolphins, if one little signing might have gone a different way. Well, I asked him about that this week, you know, with uh, Drew Brees setting the record for the most passing yards in NFL history. And Nick's got a uh, long relationship with one Drew Brees, going back to his days at Michigan State when Drew Brees was at right. Purdue. Uh, but also when they tried to sign him for the Miami Dolphins and uh, Drew was coming off of a torn rotator cuff. You see a completion here to Keith. But the doctors didn't the doctors didn't clear Drew Brees right. right all, all that was left was to pass the Dolphins physical. Well, James Andrews the doctor had cleared him and all he had to do was pass the physical and the Dolphins didn't pass the physical. But Nick told us he wanted to sign Drew Brees. Right. You know who did pass the physical? Dante no. Culpepper. <laughs> Culpepper wound up playing four games for the Dolphins. Drew Brees, Drew Brees went on to play 174 out of 176 games wow. with the New Orleans Saints. Well, well, Sa Saban wouldn't be here. Exactly. He might uh, he might be uh, battling Brady and Belichick in the AFC East with Brees at the Dolphins. It was funny what he said, Todd. He yep. said at the end, he said, you know, I wanted to sign him, and James Andrews cleared him. Our doctors didn't clear him, but you had to have a lot of guts to go right. to the owner, Wayne Heising, and say, I need you to pay this guy $10 million a year, and the doctors don't even pass the physical. <laughs> right. I, I think he has the guts now, maybe not back then, right? <laughs> and you think if James Andrews says you're good. Yeah, you're good. No. you got to be good. I got a question for you, Greasy. How about this comparison? Tua and Drew Brees. I, I see a lot of similarities with the wow. lack of I, I know, I know. I'm, I'll get yelled at this. Yelled at <laughs> no, this. keep going. Don't stop. I, yeah, yeah, Don't I'm, stop. I'm fully in the pool now. Oh. I, I think the ability to move within the pocket and then the decisiveness. Now, we're all to see the accuracy. Obviously, so much to see. Only seven starts in his college career, but I think there's some similarities there. I, you know, I, I, I would hesitate to compare anybody to Drew Brees. He's one of the more unique quarterbacks that I have ever played against, witnessed, watched, and really enjoyed. Uh, he just has a well, That's another, the trouble with NFL comparisons. He has another level, okay? Drew Brees is on a completely different level. So I'm level. never allowed to compare anyone to Drew no, Brees. No, no, no. <laughs> but but I love, what I love about Tua, and what makes Tua different is his demeanor to me. Yes, he's accurate. He doesn't bowl you over with any one aspect of his game. He's consistent, but I just love his demeanor. That, to me, is what separates him. So we take a look at tonight's PlayStation Player Index. Drew Brees. <laughs> oh, no, sorry, my bad. <laughs> To a tongue of Iloa. <laughs> Laugh it up. Oh. See some Good of the thing I said, said it with about a minute left in the game. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. America's still watching McShay. Yeah. Uh, Drew Locke has, has taken some offense to people being unable. After all these years, the numbers he's put, they can't spell his name right. They, they add the Happy. silent E to the end. And I'm thinking the whole country can now say tongue of Iloa fine, and we can't spell Locke correctly. Does not seem fair. Got a little brother played uh, last night here locally in yeah. Alabama and threw a touchdown pass to win the game. He's committed to Alabama. Of course he did, and of course he is. Yeah, right. It's so uh, get used to pronouncing that name. Talia is his name. Final seconds will tick away. Seven seconds left on the clock. Again, fight night is coming up. I think we're right about on time, about five minutes away from now. A title is on the line. Terrence Crawford will defend his WBO welterweight title against Jose Benavides. The undercard is streaming on the app right now. Stay tuned right here to ESPN after the game for the main event.
There was some bad blood. These two got together. Some punches thrown. Some shoving, some pushing at the weigh-in yesterday. Both camps don't like each other. You get the idea. Should be a great night of main event boxing right here on ESPN. There will be a huge shakeup in the college football top ten. Number one, Alabama will not be impacted. Here's Todd McShay. The coach sent some frustration with the defense um, and then some of the injuries you had coming into this week. How do you think the defense played today? Well, I think we gave up ten points to a pretty explosive offense that you know is one of the best offenses in the country. So I'm really pleased. You know, we challenged them. They responded to the challenge. So I'm happy about that. You said you're looking forward. We talked to you earlier this week. Get some adversity and see how your team res responded. You had a lot of injuries tonight. Different things happened. How did you think your team responded? I think they responded. I think it was a tough game. You got to give Missouri a lot of credit. They played hard. They were physical and. Uh, you know I think our guys responded in the game and played well so we're, we're excited about the victory it's a great crowd and great homecoming and we're just happy to win the game any update on Tua yeah Tua's is OK I mean he got the same injury he had before so we just didn't put him back in the game Jaden did a nice job okay, thanks coach well, a bit of a different night here in Tuscaloosa Alabama didn't score 55 and they didn't win by 40 but they did score 26 unanswered to break open a three point game after the first quarter it's all Alabama tonight up next the welterweight title is on the line it's Terrence Crawford taking on Jose Benavides for Brian Greasy and Todd McShane producer Josh Hoffman director Mike Schwab I'm Steve Levy so long from Alabama <laughs>